with Rich Scranta. He's chief executive and founder of Search Engine Blacko. Last we spoke was at PubCon in 2010. It was just, I believe it, Blacko had just launched uh, prior to PubCon. Can you fill us in on, on what major changes have happened at the search engine over the past year or so? Yeah, great. Um, yeah, we did launch in November 1st, uh, 2010, and uh, we had a great year of organic growth last year. When we launched, you know, we had positioned Blecko all around slash tags, and slash tags are a way for users to come to Blecko and help curate the web. You can basically get a toolkit to build your own vertical search engine for whatever your interest is and put a set of sites into it and use slash tags to refine based on, on that query syntax. What we found was that for a lot of users, though, they didn't know, you know, we had a slash tag that would work in a particular category. So we developed some technology internally that could look at a regular query that didn't have a slash tag and see if we had a slash tag that would improve the results for that category. And we deployed that around the middle of last year. So now if you come to Blecko and do a search like cashback credit card, we'll automatically turn on our slash money slash tag. And this is a slash tag that's actually being curated by one of our partners, Motley Fool. They're taking care of all of our personal finance section, uh, sections. So we can take regular queries. You don't have to know about the slash tag syntax and automatically clean up the results, get all the spam out, get all the affiliates out, no ad clicks, no malware, no affiliates, no SEO, uh, you know, just perfect results. Who doesn't want that? Yeah, it works great. It's working in about 500 categories. And these are categories where, you know, if you do searches on the mainstream search engines, you could actually get, you know, 10 out of 10 bad links. A search like, you know, online law degree, you'll get 10 affiliate sites on Google and Bing. And we can actually give you 10 actual colleges where you can get an online degree uh, in law. It's fantastic. It works really great. So we're doing this in about 500 categories. Hopefully by the end of the year, we can push this out to about 1,000. And that really reached just pretty far down the long tail of, uh, of spam. I mean, we're doing, you know, luxury goods like purses, watches, jewelry, uh, designer jeans, health topics, all the way down to things like, you know, material safety data sheets and, uh, you know, if you want to take a cruise or something. You know, lots of spam in all these categories, high-value searches. Mm -hmm. uh, but there really is great content on the web, but a lot of times it has a hard time outranking uh, the spam that exists. Nice. So let's talk about the 400% increase in traffic that you've seen this year. What, what do you attribute that spike to? Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a couple of drivers behind that. Um, uh, you know, one of them was around the end of last year, Yahoo shut down their Yahoo Site Explorer product. And this had been very popular with SEO professionals. And we just got a massive number of SEO folks coming and registering with Blacko to get our free SEO data. We've got a great backlink tool. We can show you all sorts of information about your site. Uh, inbound links, anchor text, duplicate text, where your links come geographically. Basically, anything we obtain from our crawl, uh, we put on our web, you know, we put on Blecko and you can click on the SEO button and, and see all this. So it's become very popular and, and that drove a huge ramp in the number of, uh, registered Blecko users. Uh, we also, uh, put out an index update around the end of the year that made the results a lot faster and really improved Blecko on long tail queries. And we saw pretty much an immediate jump in usage after we deployed that. There have been a lot of people coming to Blecko and trying queries. And, you know, yeah, for a health query, we had great results, but they'd try a long tail query and it wasn't working, say, last June. In November, that query was now working. And so the users were more satisfied and they were sticking around on Blecko longer and they were cheating more. Uh, we also put out last year uh, an update to our privacy policy. We decided we wanted to have a goal to have the best privacy policy of any search engine. So we, by default, will throw your data away after 20, after 48 hours, rather. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you set, like, do not track in Mozilla, we'll throw it away immediately. We won't save anything about you, and we won't communicate your queries to any third parties. Um, I'd say two years ago, nobody, you know, that really care about privacy. Some of the tinfoil hat crowd cared about privacy. Mm -hmm. But it seems to have become much more of a mainstream issue in the last few months, where I was at South by Southwest doing booth duty, and just I was surprised at how many people came up and said that they, they were really concerned about their searches being being recorded uh, by the big engines, and that they wanted to keep uh, their search activity secret. Mm -hmm. Speaking of trade shows, um, you've attributed your growth to your presence at trade shows and industry events. Can you share with us what it is you're doing there? Uh, maybe other companies can learn what you're doing right. Sure. Um, yeah, it's been interesting because we've almost had kind of like a marketing R&D project on the trade show front. Uh, you know, there's sort of the, the trade shows that it makes sense for Blacko to be at. 
you know, there's the tech events, you know, if you go to like a TechCrunch show or SMX, the SEO shows, PubCon, you know, you say, well, Black Oak should be here, we expect to see them here. But something like South by Southwest, uh, if you do South by, you actually, they force you to do all three shows if you have a booth. So you start out with a search engine startup at an internet conference, and by the end of the week you have a search engine startup booth at a music festival. And the first year we did this, which was last year, we were like, well, how's this going to go? We'll just experiment on this. South by looks like a big show, and we want to be at the Internet part of it. We'll stick around for the rest of the week. It won't be so bad. We were surprised, you know, as the audience shifted to what I you know, really call a more, more mainstream and less technically savvy audience, we still had a lot of interest in our booth. Uh, people would come up. You know, everybody cares about spam. Everybody wants good search results. Everybody uses a search engine. A search engine really isn't that technical a product. I mean, everybody on the planet that's on the Internet uses a search engine, so it's actually a very mainstream kind of technology. Uh, another c uh, class of shows that we found worked really well for us, surprisingly, was librarian conferences. Librarians love Blacko. Uh, we show them curated yeah. collections of high-quality sites. They're all about that. They're all about reference collections. Uh, we show them advanced query operators where you can do something like Obama slash date range equals 2004-2006. And they flip out over this stuff. They love it. They're not put off by the complex query syntax. So we take boxes of flyers to librarian conferences, and they, they take stacks of these flyers back to their libraries, and they put them on the, on the desk to hand out to people to come up and ask questions about using uh, search on the Internet. Uh, so that's been, that's been really successful for us. So you'll find us at every librarian show uh, now. How funny. What about those two um, characters? Are they... Spam police or oh, that's slash tag man and slash tag woman. Yeah, okay, they, they okay. Get the, they get the spam out of your uh, out of your search if you, you nice. know, if you find yourself in a dark neighborhood on the on the web, then uh, mm -hmm. slash tag woman will appear and you know you know cut out the spam and uh, and protect you. Uh, Do you have a an actual date in mind as a goal for when you would like to catch up to Google? <laughs> catch up to Google. Um, well, you know, Google does a lot of things, and I think we're you know our, our goal here is to stay pretty focused on spam free search. Uh, you know, we don't want to have the biggest, most comprehensive index of the web. We don't want to index every piece of information in the world. We really would like to retain that spot as having a, a search site where you can go to and be guaranteed that you're not going to get any junk, where you're only going to get high-quality information. And at the moment, we don't have any plans to de develop a, a moon base or robotic cars or, or a free email system or anything like that. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that, you know, I, I think Google, what Google does, they do very well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I use other Google services. I, I think yeah, I think they're great, actually. Uh, but what we're trying to do is really, you know, in a way, it's kind of different than their mission. And uh, we just want to succeed at that and give consumers really an editorial alternative in search. We see search as an editorial property. Um, you know, Google has sort of you know positioned it as uh, you know the algorithms you know will make sense of this trillion-page corpus that's out there. And we say no, no, no. It's actually more like the New York Times. And you know, you want the New York Times to have a different than you know BBC or LA Times or Washington Post or you know some newspaper in Canada. If they all print the same AP stories, it's not really very interesting. You want there to be a take on the news. You want Fox versus CNN or Fox versus uh, you know uh, and you know MSNBC or something. You want there to be you know a point of view that you you know you have an affinity for, and that's really what we're trying to do here. If you do a health query on Blacko, I want you to get ten articles where there's an MD or some other medical professional willing to stand behind them. Uh, some people say, well, no, I actually want to get eHow. You know, I think eHow's fine. We don't like eHow. Um, we don't like alternative medicine articles appearing on our health queries. I want mainstream medicine. My father was a doctor, kind of a you know, mainstream medicine guy. We have a great alt med section. You can turn it on with a slash tag if you want that. But for a default health query, I want 10 articles on the front page by an MD. That's an editorial choice. It's not saying, well, it's the algorithm. We'll let the algorithm choose, or we'll let the web choose. This is really us exerting our editorial opinion on the search results, and I think that's kind of novel. No search engine has done that before. So I think we're adding something uh, for consumers to the search space. What about plans for monetization of Blacko? Um, we've started some monetization tests with uh, with some partners. Uh, if you come to Blacko directly, you won't see any search ads. Uh, but if you're in one of our test buckets you'll get sort of standard search advertising where you have a few search ads above the results and a few uh, on the right. And so far, those tests have been uh, really encouraging. Uh, so I think, uh, I think we'll be rolling out more, uh, more advertising over the course of the year. Okay, great. Um, so lastly, I want to ask you a little bit of a more personal question. What are the, 
the eyebrows raised. <laughs> what are uh, the habits, routines, and or rituals that you institute on a daily basis that you would attribute to your success in business or life in general? Uh, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I try to exercise every day. Uh, sometimes I'm not successful at that, but uh, I'm making a new push this year. Uh, whenever I can actually work out and, uh, and you know, and, and eat right and all that, you know, I just I'm more productive. Um, and if I can not stay up all night, you know, if I can actually go to sleep and get a you know good night's rest, then I you know I tend to be much more productive the next day. So um, nothing novel there. I, you know, I, I think I read all the same information we all read. <laughs> but it's you know it really is when you're in a startup. There's so many stresses and there's just you know you're getting all this information. Half of it's good, half of it's bad, and you're just pr processing it all. You know, you got to get the stress out. You have to drag yourself outside and you know go for a run or a hike or something. It's just really, really key. Um, the other thing I do is I, I actually just try and stay on top of uh, all the you know industry trends and stuff. So I you know I consume just a lot of uh, you know a lot a lot of sort of the, the big feed coming in. You know everything on Y Combinator, TechCrunch, Hando Daily. You know everything. You know you write, of course. Um, but just you know the whole you know if you can ingest it all and scan quickly and say what's going on what what's the big macro trends that we need to be in front of um, that you know that tends to be really important to help you stay in front of it uh, and then the other thing is just to you know maintain a connection with the people you're working with I'd say that's probably actually the most important um, you know you're working with a group of people and you're kind of like you know you're like some of these 18th century explorers locked in a boat together and you've like sailed off across the ICC. And no one's seen you for two years, and everyone's kind of going stir crazy on the boat. How do you keep everyone's spirits up? How do you say, no, no, we're going to get there? It's great. That's that's the mission of any startup. And uh, you know, sometimes you know it looks bad. Sometimes it looks good. It's, being on a startup's a roller coaster. It always is. And every startup I've done has been like that. Um, the last two had really good outcomes, but there were points where you know you have the night terrors and the nausea, and you know, you know everyone wants to kill you. It's just it's the way it is. Um, and uh, you know, you just have to you have to maintain a really positive attitude. You know, stay on the boat, stay in your foxhole, keep shooting, and uh, and it'll all work out okay. Uh, so, extra, eat right, exercise, and have a good attitude. Nice. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Rich. It was great to catch up with you, and uh, congratulations. I mean, this has been a great year and couple months for you. So, best to you and your endeavors, and maybe we'll catch up again next year. Great. Thanks, Vanessa.